Go ahead. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Bennett, and I am a middle school and high school math teacher. But I have to tell you something. I don't think what I teach is very important. In fact, if it were up to me, I would no longer require math to be taught, or I should say required, in middle school and high school. Now, some of you may not agree with me, and that's okay, but that's what this is all about, right? So my attitude wasn't always this way. In fact, it's evolved over time. And I want to share with you my story of how it evolved and also what we can do about it, the, my solution that will come at the end. It all started with what I call the big question. All my students ask me this every year. Mr. B, when are we going to use this stuff in like, you know, like real life, this math stuff? <laughs> yeah, I had to come up with an answer with that. So I came up with one. I was a green math teacher. I was full of optimism. I was like a superhero. I was like, math man. <laughs> I was going to convince them that math is everywhere. It is in the spiral of the seeds of a sunflower and the same spiral in galaxies. It's the same spiral. It's a mathematical curve that's connected to something called the golden ratio, which I think is pretty cool. But alas, that was not met by my students, but that's okay, because I had another trick up my sleeve, another answer to the big question, and that was math is helpful. Scientists would not be able to use the tool of mathematics to design the iPhone, internet, in your pocket, man, Golden Gate Bridge, cloning a sheep. You couldn't have that without math, right, guys? Guys? Hello? Is this thing on? Yeah, whatever, math man. <laughs> so that didn't go over big. So I had to find another way to connect my students to this math stuff, because this stuff wasn't working. Huh, I know. I could pick something they could relate to. You know, you might end up choosing a job that requires some math, you know? Yeah, like I'm going to do a job that requires this stuff. <laughs> but I would tell them, you know what, maybe you're not now, but maybe, who knows, 10 years down the line, you, you, you might pick something. You might want to be an engineer or something. And you can do it, man. So that's what I became. You can do it, man. I know you can, and I'm going to help you. And through the years, students would come back to me, my old students, through emails, and come, they would stop by the old school, and they'd say, hey, Mr. B, how's it going? I'm like, hey, how's that math? You're still using it, right? No, nah, not really. Hmm. Four of them said yes. Guess what they all do? Thank you. They're math teachers. <laughs> so I began to think, hmm, they're not really using this stuff. And I, but you, don't get me wrong. If a student came up, comes up to me and says, yo, Mr. B, I want to be an engineer. I want to use this math stuff. I like it. I like math. I like science. I want to go for it. I would stop at nothing to make sure that, that kid got the resources that he or she needed. But think about it for a second. 300 million people in the United States, 1.5 million engineers. That's a half of a percent. Let's double that number. For every engineer, let's say there's another person who uses some math in his or her job. That's still only 1%. Whoa, how many percent does that make of that people that don't need higher math? You guessed it, 99% of us don't need it. Hmm, so I had to come up with something better. Another answer to this the big question, when am I going to use this math stuff in real life? And I went to the dark side of the force, and I used fear. Ha-ha. <laughs> I said, you know what? Guess what? You're on a certain path. Yes, you are. You're on the dark side of the force. And what that dark side is all about is you got to get good grades now in high school. You got to do math to get that. You got to do well on the SATs, everyone, all together now. You got to get good grades in high school so you can get a good college. You got to get a good college to get yourself a good job. You got to get a good job to get good money and good money to be happy and happy, successful. Right, guys? <laughs> I had to answer the question, and I had them in the palm of my hand. Yes, that's the answer I'm going to use from now on, I said. But you know what? It didn't really sit right, right here. It didn't sit right. It worked. Hmm. And I started talking to my buddies. Hey, how's it going? Facebook, high school reunions. And I realized that the guys who got these high, and, and women too, got the high GPAs, went to the good colleges, weren't necessarily the most successful, whatever that means to you. In fact, the success didn't depend on what college they went to or even if they went to college. Well, maybe it's about the SATs. That's it. The SATs will predict how successful my kids will be in the future, right? Well, I'm going to defer to the well-known educational reformer, Alfie Cohn. Ten years ago, he said this. The SAT is a measure of resources more than of reasoning. Year after year, the college warns own statistic to pick a virtually linear correlation between SAT scores and family income. Bottom line, SATs measure how rich the guy's parents are, and that's it. 
So this answer I had in my pocket, I had to let it go. It worked, but I had to let it go. So I had to think of something else. And that's when I shifted. I stopped trying to connect math with my students, and I just started to connect with them. Hmm, imagine that. (laughs) And when I did, they started opening up to me and talking to me about how much math is stressing them out. It does. I turned into, I'm just here to help, man. (laughs) I'm going to get you through this painful part of your life as painlessly as possible. And they started opening up to me, and they started telling me their stories. And I hate to break it to you, but the story I heard most, I call the Mr. Johnson story. You know, Mr. B, they said, I, I used to be pretty good at math. You know, I was actually like, you know, I liked it until I had Mr. Johnson in third grade. And I know, I, he made me feel stupid and told me I couldn't do it. And, you know, ever, ever since then, I, I've never really liked or been good at it. I've heard that story far too many times from my students, other students, their parents, adults, my teachers at school. It's tragic. This shouldn't be. Because these stressed out kids become stressed adults. Do you know that in the last 40 years we've had a term called math anxiety? I'm not kidding. Do you know that there are books and books about math anxiety? (laughs) You're laughing, but I ain't kidding. I didn't make this stuff up. You go Google this and you will find dozens of books. Here are a few of my favorite titles. Conquering Math Anxiety. You need Math Man for that. Math, a four-letter word. And my personal favorite, Math Doesn't Suck. <laughs> Something's got to change about this. Do you see English anxiety or, or you know, Spanish anxiety or whatever? No. Math anxiety for 40 years. That the, just the term has been around. You know... If I were smart, I would be some enterprising young pharmaceutical company guy, and I would say, with all the Prozac and Zoloft that's going on, (laughs) Math Man would design Algebrex (laughs) to help reduce math anxiety, but watch out for the possible side effects. Nausea, vomiting, high blood pressure, and insomnia due to sudden and unexplainable inability to count sheep. I know I'm joking about that, but I've met adults with this. It's no joke. I just bring up math, and they want to like, confess everything. That, they're shaking. <laughs> I know it, it sounds funny, but it's, it's a real deal. It's not the fakey fakey. So I, once again, back to my question, how is I going to answer that question? You know, are we going to use this stuff in real life? And I had to reach down to the depths of my soul to come up with an answer that felt right and worked. And you know what I said? I said, you know what? You won't. I needed a forklift to pick up the jaws off the desks and put them back in their heads because they were amazed that a guy like me would actually admit that we don't actually need higher math in real life. Huh, imagine that. So I had to answer the question myself. When do you use math in real life? Think about it for a second. The first thing I bet you came up to your mind was money, right? Yeah. Financial stuff, budget, taxes, balancing your checkbook. I get that. Well, what do you need for that? You need counting, estimating, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, decimals, the two decimal places, not rounding the nearest 10,000th place or something like that. We don't need that. Okay, what else? Maybe you do some cooking or carpentry and you need some basic fractions. Basic fractions, not two-fifths plus three-sevenths and common denominator and blah, 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 which I dish out every single year. We don't need that anymore. You throw in 20% off at the mall, 15% tip at a restaurant, you need some basic percentages, and that is it. How old were you when you learned this stuff? Thank you. (laughs) 10. I usually get the answer around 10. So just for the sake of argument, let's say at the end of elementary school, you have learned all the math that you will need in real life, then what the heck are we learning this middle school and high school math stuff for? It's got to go. You agree with me? Maybe. At least if you don't, maybe you'll at least think about it. Think about it. This is coming from a math teacher. Whoa, okay. So, then what's the answer? No, excuse me. Before I answer what's the answer, I'm going to save that for the end. Then why are we still teaching this algebra stuff? Here's why. Math gives us two different kinds of reasoning. Deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. That's the part that we take away from math. Deductive reasoning is a series of connected logical steps that leads to conclusion. For example, if I uh, don't hang out with my friends after school, I'll go to the library and study. If I go to the study, I'm going to get an A on the test. If I get an A on the test, mom's going to be happy. Therefore, if I don't hang out with my friends at the mall after school, my mom will be happy. 
Deductive reasoning, we need that, we use that in everyday life. Inductive reasoning is where we look at data, we find a pattern, and we make a generalization based on the data. If I cram for my science test and get an A, hmm. If I cram next day for my English test and get an A, oh. Hey, this is working, isn't it? Therefore, it works all the time. Now, that's not foolproof, but that is a kind of reasoning that we use. Math gives us those same kinds of reasoning. Here's an example of deductive reasoning in math. If 2x minus 1 equals 9, then for 2x must equal 10, therefore x equals 5. We all get that. But your math teacher gives you 20 million of those problems to do for homework the next day and expects you to make the inductive reasoning leap. Ah, every time I see a problem like that, this is how I solve that. It's that leap, actually, which I find the most challenging as a math teacher. Not how to do one problem, but how to do them all that look kind of like that. But if there's a zero next to the x, then the whole thing falls apart. So inductive reasoning doesn't stick all the time, but it is something what you use all the time. Is there an answer? Yes. Ah. <sighs> Here it is. For the last 10 years in my math classrooms, I've been incorporating logic puzzles and games, I call them brain games, to help develop those analytical skills. If we were to incorporate this into our classroom, I am confident that we can reawaken these analytical uh, critical thinking skills that are lying dormant, that have been anesthetized by the standard curriculum. I am convinced, and I believe that if we make math no longer a required subject, for middle school and high school, and you let the people who are connected to it, who want to take it, take it, and those of us who don't, you let them play games and puzzles that help develop that cognitive reasoning skills. I am confident that these students will not only be fully equipped to handle life's challenges, but will be able to pursue their passions and fulfill their life's missions. Thank you very much.